In this lecture, we'll go into the details of Snap Mirror data protection mirrors, including how to configure them and also how to fail over and fail back in a disaster recovery situation. I'll summarize the main points about data protection mirrors again first. When we talk about Snap Mirror in general, it's DP mirrors that we're talking about. And Snap Mirror can replicate volumes within the same ONTAP cluster, but more commonly, it's going to be used to replicate data between different clusters. Snap Mirror DP mirrors can also be used to replicate data between different NetApp storage systems with different operating systems on there. Have a look back at the Data Fabric lecture in section two again for more details on that. The use cases where DP mirrors would be used most commonly is to replicate data between volumes in different clusters for disaster recovery. If you do need to fail over to the DR site, it does require manual intervention. That's a difference between this and with Metro cluster, which can be configured to do it automatically. Other use cases for Snap Mirror DP mirrors to provide load balancing for read access across different sites for data migration to move data between clusters or to move data between different SVMs in the same cluster and also to replicate data to a centralized tape backup location. Okay, so that was a summary that we'd already really covered those points before, the main things about DP mirrors. Next up, let's look at how to actually configure this. First off, we need to do our initial configuration steps. We covered these just in the previous lectures there, but let's just mention them again briefly here. So make sure that you've got Snap Mirror licensed on both clusters. Then create your intercluster lifts. You need one on each node, peer the clusters, and then peer the SVMs. Again, for more detail on that, check the previous lectures. Next, we're ready to create and initialize the volume mirror relationship. This is all configured on the destination side. So when you do your configuration for Snap Mirror DP mirrors at the command line, it's done on the destination and the data is going to be pulled over from there. When you configure it in the GUI, you actually configure this on the source cluster. I'll show you that with a lab demo later. Okay, but doing it in the command line. So the first thing that we need to do on the destination cluster is create the volume that we're going to be replicating the data into. That uses a standard volume create command. So in our example, we've got volume create. The V server that we're replicating into is named department A underscore DP. The volume that we're creating, we're going to call this vol1 underscore DP for our example. Specify the aggregate it's going to go into, the size of the volume. And then the difference between this and creating a normal flexible volume is we specify type DP. This means that it is going to be used as a snap mirror destination. It's configured as a read-only volume under normal conditions, and auto grow is going to be enabled on there. Next, after we have created the volume, we need to configure the snap mirror relationship between the source and the destination volume. Again, it's all done on the destination side. The command is snap mirror create. We specify the destination path. The syntax here is the name of the SVM, and then a colon, and then the name of the volume. So for the destination path, we're replicating the data into the department A underscore DP SVM and the vol1 underscore DP volume in that SVM. We also specify the source path. So we're replicating from the department A SVM on the source cluster, and the volume is vol1. We then say type is XDP for extended data protection. Specify the policy that you want to use. You can either use one of the system policies as we are here with mirror all snapshots, or you can use your own custom policy. Custom policies are most often used for snap vault. So we'll go into custom policies when we get to the snap vault lectures. And then finally, specify the schedule, how often you want to replicate the data. That creates the relationship between the source and the destination volume, but it doesn't actually move any data yet. So to actually do that initial baseline transfer, the command is snap mirror initialize, and we specify the destination path and the normal syntax again, the destination SVM and the destination volume. We don't need to specify the source path here because we can only replicate one volume into a destination volume because we've already configured that relationship 
the ONTAP cluster already knows, okay, well, for this destination path, the only source I've got is this one here, and it will do that initial baseline transfer. It will copy all of the data across. So that was when we break the commands down. I'll just go back in. The three separate commands. So a command for creating the volume, a command for creating the mirror relationship, and then a command for doing the initial baseline transfer. You can also do the whole thing with the snap mirror protect command. But I wanted to show you when it's broken down first so that when you do use the snap mirror protect command, you understand what's going on actually behind the scenes there because it's going to do the same configuration for you, but just with one command. So when you use the snap mirror protect command, that will create the destination volume, configure the snap mirror relationship, and initialize the relationship all in one command at the command line. With the snap mirror protect command, you can also protect multiple source volumes at the same time with a single command. You cannot do that if you use the snap mirror create command. So looking at an example with the, the command syntax here, we've got snap mirror protect, and in the path list, there you see the SVM and the volume, and this acts as a wild card. So if we had three volumes named vol1, vol2, and vol3, I could specify the SVM and then a colon and then say vol, and that will match vol1, vol2, and vol3. It will create snap mirror relationships into different destination volumes for each three of those volumes. You specify the destination V server that you want to replicate into, specify your snap mirror policy, the schedule, how often you want to replicate, auto initialize if you want to do the initial baseline transfer or not as part of this command. And then you can specify a destination volume prefix and or destination volume suffix. So again, using that example where we had vol1, vol2, and vol3, I could say that the destination volume suffix is underscore dp, and that will create three destination volumes for me. It will create vol1 underscore dp, vol2 underscore underscore dp, and vol3 underscore dp. Okay, so the more modern way of doing it is the snap mirror protect command. Just allows you to do it with one command rather than three, but either way is valid. You can do it either way. Once you have configured your DP mirror, if you look at the reports for that snap mirror relationship, either in the GUI or in the command line, you'll see that one of the things that is reported is the lag time. What the lag time is, is the difference between the current time and the timestamp of the last successfully transferred snapshot copy. So if you've got a schedule of 10 minutes, for example, the lag time could go up to 10 minutes and that would be normal. If the lag time says nine minutes, it just means that it was nine minutes since the last replication occurred. That's not a problem. We expect it to happen again in one minute. If you did have a 10 minute replication schedule and you saw that the lag time was one hour, that would indicate that there is a problem though and you would want to investigate that. Now, the lag time can be off or even a negative value if the clusters have different time zones or clocks which are not synchronized. Again, your clusters should always be synchronized to the same time using an NTP server. Next up, let's look at what we'll do if our main site does go down and we want to fail over to the DR site. So the first command to use, and these commands are all done on the destination side which is a good thing if you think about it, because if we'd lost the source side, it's not even there anymore, we wouldn't be able to run the commands on that side. So it's done on the DR site, on the destination side. The same as when we do the initial configuration. First command we've got is snap mirror ks and specify the destination path. What this does is it will allow a current transfer to complete, but it will stop future transfers. So if you're thinking, well, how could the current transfer complete? Maybe the first site hasn't actually been lost, but let's say that something's happened, like the weather reports come in and we're expecting terrible weather, possible flooding. So as a precautionary measure, we're going to fail over to the DR site. So when we do the failover, both the primary site and the DR site would both be online. So we would use the snap mirror ks command. If there is a transfer running right now, it will allow that transfer to complete and it will then pause current transfers. Even if we have actually lost the primary site, it's not there anymore and you know that it can't be doing a transfer right now, still use the snap mirror ks command first. Once the snap mirror ks command has been run, the next command to run is snap mirror break and again, specify the destination path. 
what this does is it breaks off the snap mirror relationship and it makes the DR volume a writable, a read-write volume, so it can now be used. Okay, once you've done that, so you, you're going to have to direct the clients from the original main site over to the DR site to use that new cluster. There's different ways you can do that. You could do it manually on the clients by just pointing them at a different IP address or a different FQDN to use. You can also use various networking tools such as cluster server load balancing. Speak to the networking team about this and you'll be able to figure out the best way to do it for your particular environment. Okay, so once you have done the failover, when you've got the snap mirror relationship configured, it just replicates the data, including file level permissions to the destination volume. So it's basically the raw data that's being replicated across there. Any data on tap settings that are on the source cluster are not replicated to the destination cluster. So you're going to need to also configure your on tap settings before the destination site is going to be usable. So the settings must be configured and the client's redirected to access the storage in the new location. Now you can save time by pre-configuring these settings before you have to do a failover. Okay, so this is how it works when you're using standard DP mirrors. There is another solution available, which is Snap Mirror for SVM, which actually will replicate both the data and the on tap settings as well. I'll talk about that in a later lecture. So when we're using standard DP mirrors, we want to fail over to the DR site. For the data to be accessible to the clients, we need to configure the on tap settings. The different on tap settings that we're going to need to configure are we're going to need to mount the volumes into the namespace using the same junction path as it was on the source. We need to share the volume. We need to apply any other appropriate permissions, export policies, apply quota rules, apply the snapshot policy, and remount the NFS and SIF shares on the clients finally for them to be able to access the data. So you can see here all of the on tap settings that were on the source cluster. We're going to need to configure those on the destination cluster as well to give the clients access to the data. So it's everything we need to do if it's NAS protocols that we're using. If we're using SAN, things we need to do there, map the ones to the appropriate initiator group on the destination cluster, apply snapshot policy, and then from the client side, create new iSCSI sessions from the client and perform a storage rescan for the ones to appear available again. Okay, so that's how we do the failover is we do the snap mirror KS and the snap mirror break on the destination cluster. And then we need to make sure that all of our on tap settings are configured on the on tap cluster to allow access from the clients. Then once the main site is back available again and we want to fail back again, that's what we're going to configure next. So there's a few different recovery scenarios I'll go through here. The first one is if you were just doing a test to check that the DR site was working. So you've got your DR site set up and then you do a test to make sure that your clients can access the data in the disaster recovery site. In that case, all that you need to do to fail back to the original main site again is from the disaster recovery destination site, you can run the command snap mirror resync and then specify the destination path. When you do a resync, what it does is it pulls the copy of the data in that state from the source side. So if you do this, any changes that happened in between you doing the break are going to be lost. So what I mean there is, let's say that we, we ran our test on the disaster recovery data center. What we did there was we said yes, and we said break. And then as part of the test, we wrote some data in the volumes on the DR site, just to make sure that we've got read and write access there. If then on the DR site, again, you run the command snap mirror resync, those changes, those test changes that you made on the DR site are going to be lost because you're resyncing from the source to the destination. The state of the data in the source is going to be replicated to the destination. So all of those changes will be lost. So only do this in the test scenario. If it was an actual real disaster recovery event and you did fail over to the DR site and you made changes there that you need to, that you need to keep, Definitely do not do this. That would be a big mistake because you will lose them if you do that. Okay, so next up, let's look at that second scenario. 
where it was a real disaster recovery event. So we actually did lose the primary site. We failed over to the DR site. Then when the main site comes back online, we want to replicate those changes that were made to the DR site back to the primary site again. We don't need to copy all of the data with a new initial baseline transfer because the primary data center was just offline for some time. The original data is still there and the original stat mirror snapshots. We just need to replicate the changes across that were made in the DR site while the primary site was down. So what we do there is now we need to replicate the changes from the DR site back to the primary site. So the replication is going in the other direction. So what you do now is you go on to the primary cluster over here on the left and you create a new snap mirror relationship which is going to pull data from the right to the left. So on the primary cluster, we say snap mirror create. The destination path is now the original source volume, which was department A vol 1. The source path was the original destination path, which was department A DP and colon vol1 underscore dp and we say type xdp and the policy is mirror all snapshots so this is basically a reverse of what the original snap mirror create command was then again on the primary we say snap mirror resync and the destination path and that will pull all the changes that were made on the dr site while the primary site was down back over to the primary site again okay so now at this point it's great we've got all the data back in the primary site but the problem is that the replication is now happening in the wrong direction. We want to get back to how we were originally, where changes are being written to the primary site, and they're going to be replicated back over to the DR site. So what we do next is on the primary site, now that we've got the data back over there, we can now break off that snap mirror relationship. So on the primary site, we say snap mirror key S, the destination path, and then snap mirror break, that will now make the primary data center writable again. And then to clean up, we can say snap mirror delete to delete that snap mirror relationship. Then the last thing that we need to do is to get back to where we started from, where changes are being replicated from left to right. So the command that we say for that is back on the DR site again, snap mirror resync and the destination path. Remember, when you're doing the configuration, it always works in a pool direction. So because we want to pull the changes back to the DR site, this command is going to be run on the DR site. Okay, so that's how we do it in the command line. There is a simplified workflow when you're doing it in the GUI. So when you're doing it in the command line, for the disaster recovery event, when you want to fail over to the DR site, you do the snap mirror key S, and the snap mirror break on the DR site. When the main site comes back online again, you need to create a new snap mirror relationship with snap mirror create on the primary to pull the data back again. You then need to do the resync to pull it back. You can then key S and break and then delete the snap mirror on the primary site. And then back on the DR site, you need to do a resync again. So quite a few commands you need to do there. You need to make sure you do them on the right side and in the right order. If you use the system manager GUI to do this, it is simplified. You can just do everything from the destination cluster. It uses the reverse resync command when you do it there. I'll show you how to do that with a lab demo later on. Okay, the last recovery scenario that I want to tell you about is if the primary data center is actually gone, the storage system there. So let's say in the primary data center, we had a fire in the server room and the storage system has been destroyed. Then what we do is we repair the server room, we buy new hardware, the new storage system, and then we want to get back where that is our main site again. So again, after the failover, fail back, we would create a new volume on the primary data center. We would create a new snap mirror relationship with the snap mirror create command on the primary data center. We would then need to do an initialization and then do a resync to the primary and then reverse that back to DR. The difference here is that if the primary data center was destroyed, then we've lost all the data that was there. With, with the second scenario, the, we hadn't lost the storage system. 
So the data was still there from maybe a couple of weeks ago. The snapshots were still there as well. So we didn't have to do a complete new baseline. We didn't have to do a, an initial transfer of all the data back to the main site. But if the main site system was lost, like it was in a fire, there's no data there, in that case, we're gonna have to do an initial baseline transfer to copy all the data back to the main site. We could then break off that snap mirror relationship and then reverse the direction back from the primary site over to the DR site again. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.